If I could hold the whole, you hey, know. Hey, love is love. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> the world has wrought this upon themselves. <laughs> Welcome to the Smoke Pit. Hey. So we had a fantastic debate on our Instagram. Mm-hmm. And uh, Facebook. And Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, young Michael here, my co-host, Mike Sensi, myself, Dan Sharp. We got some guests with us today, but we'll get to that later. Uh, our executive <laughs> producer. Yeah. Welcome, friends. <laughs> That's right. No, this, this, this is a family business right now. <laughs> our executive producer, um, I forgot his name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fuck. Stead Romare. I'm just blamed, blank with anger right That's now. Fair. I, That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. And so we uh, we post a, a question mm-hmm. on our social media. Mike, take it away. Yeah. So, well, I mean, well, pretty much we we shout out the question that divided uh, my old battalion. Uh, I lost friends over this debate. Uh, <laughs> who wins in a fight between a grizzly bear and a silverback gorilla? Now, Ooh. me being a learned doctor, yeah. I decided that the uh, silverback would win easily because of the opposable thumb. Yeah, thumb in the yeah. eye, 100%. you know, and like just and, and he can like cup the testicles exactly. and rip exactly. Cup and you ever have you have you seen how strong silverback gorillas yeah. are? They rip up like tree roots from the ground. They can fucking like lift a Volkswagen bug. One hundred percent. Like one of the old ones. They fuck for sure. Yeah, no yeah. shit. <laughs> like fun fact: those uh, those bugs had the old ones actually float in water. Do what? They float in water. The really? old Volkswagen bu- uh, beetles. How do you know this? Because there was a documentary that showed this uh, somewhere, you know, somewhere in uh, unfortunate country that is in America. Right. Boo. Um, yeah, boo. <laughs> Unless you're one of our listeners, and yay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, <shit>. buy our <laughs> merch. And uh, so we, uh, yeah, there was a tsunami that came in, mm-hmm. and this person was just like, "Well, fuck it. Like, if I'm gonna die, like, I'm just gonna get in my car and like, hopefully, ride it out." Yeah. The bitch floated. Oh wow. Yeah, That's floated real. to safety. The more you know. So I had this idea of like a fucking silverback gorilla with a beetle over its head running like with it's a surfboard, yeah. throwing it to the ocean, getting on top of it, That's and dope. like the Beach Boys. That's the next shirt. Right Everybody yeah. surfing, <laughs> surfing USA. I think um, yeah. If you voted grizzly bear, it's okay to be wrong once in a while, but you're not my friend anymore. So <laughs> just know that. Yep. So what do our guests think? Who wins, grizzly well, bear? Gorilla? I think before we do that, we oh. should probably introduce them. Well, okay, fair enough. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Who Go are ahead. our guests today? Go ahead. Introduce yourself, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My name's Chris Walton. I'm a retired soldier, and uh, I'm a partner and spokesperson with Pill Horse Coffee. Right yeah. on. And I'm Don Wingard, uh, retired Navy, and uh, I'm not a spokesperson, but I'm also Pill Horse Coffee. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. So what do you guys think? Who do you think would win? I'm definitely going with the silverback. I think there's just no question. As much as I love bears, especially grizzlies, uh, I think the silverback and the previously discussed opposable thumbs. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. No, I'm not with the in crowd, so I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with the grizzly bear. There's and, always uh, one. And, There's always and fuck one. you guys, unless you can set up a match in the parking lot, so we can figure it out. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, EP, do you think you could set up a match uh, between a silverback and a, and a grizzly? All right, he's working on that. Yeah. Uh, so if it doesn't happen, everybody blame him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. I'm with, I'm with it. Yeah. So we have uh, we have our guests on today, and we um, actually prepared a little bit before this. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> you say we, but did you? Yeah. No, me and EP, yeah, like is. we prepared. <laughs> I prepared by drinking. <laughs> Just violently hung over as yeah, usual. Well. And so we uh we have a few questions that we want to post to everyone in the group. Uh just to See what's on everybody's mind, and then listeners, uh, feel free to send your answers into us. Mm-hmm. And if they're entertaining, we'll read them on the next episode. Hell yeah. Yeah, cuz like sometimes we'll be like, "Hey, like what do you guys want to hear on the episode?" and you're just like, Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, like, what am I supposed to do with yeah. that? <laughs> I, do, I do like the vague answers of, like, more talking, like, okay. Okay. <laughs> we, okay. I like to see more lasagna recipes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I just want to throw that Okay. Out. Lasagna. Yeah, yeah. Who knew? Absolutely. Uh, lasagna. Yeah. Yeah. So we could do that, maybe. Yeah. The sluttiest of all dishes, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, Mike, I'll start with you. Okay. If you could kill a high-level terrorist in any elaborate way during a raid, how would it be? An example, with an e-tool as he comes into a room. Place an incendiary grenade on his balls while he sleeps, mm-hmm. or two forty from the hip at three feet away. I want to do like, <laughs> wow, that's a really good question. What I would do is I would absolute. I'm I'm, I'm speaking up. I would uh, I would throw down my weapons and we'd square off hand to hand. Yeah. I would just beat his face in, and that's it. That's why I, I want it to be like he has a weapon. We're pointing at each other, and we both run dry. We hear that click, and we're like, and we just shed our gear, just staring at each other's yeah. eyes, and then we just we come to blows. I'm so fucking aroused exactly. right now. No, that's <laughs> it, yeah. that sounded a little bit more <laughs> intimate, though. Yeah. 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 Well, of course, very yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, combat's a very intimate thing. Yeah, it really you know? is. Yeah, yeah. and so that's um, that's my vote, hand to hand. All right, and yeah. so are you thinking yeah. like eight limbs of destruction, little muay thai, <laughs> dropping some elbows. I'm just thinking just like 
like barnhouse brawl, just close your eyes and swing yeah. kind of thing, yeah. But at least have one of your boys there in case he starts whipping your oh, ass. Sure, you be like, yeah. shoot him! Yeah, shoot him, the fuck out of me. <laughs> there ain't no such thing as a fair fight, That's by right, the way. exactly, that's right. Yeah, he just takes his opposable thumbs and grabs your that's balls. Right, yeah. <laughs> this guy's strong as a gorilla, shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> or a grizzly bear. Or a grizzly so, bear, right? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right, that's fair, that's right, fair. Right, right. All right, so what, what would you say? Well, I, you know, I'm kind of in the same thought process. Mm-hmm. I'm more yeah. about the setup than the actual method exactly. of, of the kill. I, I kind of like the idea of one of these guys is like a cornered rat. You know, yeah. They know it's coming, but in the dark, they don't know when or from where. Ooh. And then, again, <laughs> just a single red dot on their chest. Yeah. So their last thoughts are, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I mean, I... I personally have never seen a red dot in the military because we didn't have the budget. <laughs> like I didn't, like they didn't even be. Uh, they, I never even got a chance to BZO my night optic for my saw. Like not even once. You don't need it. I had a zip tie in my butt stop. <laughs> like we did not get good gear. Right, right, right. <laughs> They're just like, hey, we're gonna flyer the city. Let them know you're coming yeah. and go. Yeah. <laughs> right, so what would you say? Um, I have just for the record, I have seen the red dots. Yeah, oh, yeah I'm, go, yeah. I'm an avid movie uh, watcher, so I've perfect, seen plenty perfect. of them. Yeah, okay, I just um, meant my, not my unit. Yeah, like exactly. we're too poor for that. <laughs> I just saw movies out on the show. Yeah. Um, there you go. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I kind of I had a different answer, but I think my, Mike's has kind of lured me in. Mm-hmm. Like now I've got this feeling. So yeah. But I'm a dirty fighter, so yeah. I would start stripping down all that gear. Get him doing the same, and then just pick up the gun and shoot him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like mono a mono, yeah, yeah. you motherfucker, <laughs> boom, yeah, and I'm done. Like so that. that's where I would go. Yeah, like fucking, like you take the mag out of your weapon, he does the same, and you just put it right back in. Yeah, stupid ass bitch. Yeah, I love it. That's a great answer. So I think, preferably for me, um, I would be room clearing, bayonets fixed. I come around the corner. He's right there, but he's kind of at like a like more of like a port arms carry, you know. Okay. And so I just charge. I uh, put the bayonet right in the solar plexus, and I have like a hundred round drum on my uh, on my M16. Mm-hmm. Like we had a guy in our unit who had one of those, and the gun he was like, "How many rounds did you shoot in the last firefight?" And he's like, uh, "22." He's like, "Is that still less than 30, bitch?" <laughs> like. <laughs> Why do you hate me, Gunny? <laughs> yeah, but but for but you know, because yeah, you know you should be picking your shots. Like we're not the army. No offense. Like we don't just shoot ten thousand rounds. Exactly. They're like ah, we killed them all. Yeah. Like one shot, one kill. Yeah. And <laughs> unless you're a saw gunner, then it's a lot to the everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so I got uh, an extended mag or something. Shout out to Magpul. They make a fantastic sixty round drum. He always has plugs ready. I love right. it. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, I uh, I, I did a review on that yeah, yeah, uh, for American Military News mm-hmm. and. It worked just like a charm. So, yeah, all right, bayonet this fucker, flip that shit to burst, and I just start walking it up. Mm. And I just, I'm pumping fucking 60 to 100 rounds into him at close range to the point where I could pull the bayonet through his collarbone. And he just, like, splits and twine. And you take his rib cage and, as a souvenir. Yeah. And then I fuck him. <laughs> God damn. Oh, man. Yeah, that was such a great story. I know. He was, going, he was doing so well. Yeah, I'm glad I came before you ended that story. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I made a meme that it was like um, uh, this. Uh, it was like the the dude, like the Asian dude driving with like the really big white eyes. Right, right. right. And it's like uh, when the, uh, the the infidels like killed all your boys, and you're pretending to be dead, and you hear one of them say, "All right, now let's fuck the yeah, corpses." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the big white eyes, like, ah, oh, fuck. Because at that point, like, what do you do? You know, like, yeah. do you just lay there and take it, or you try to fight? I'd, I'd assume a fight, but then I've never been in that situation, so I can't speak to that from experience. Not yet. <laughs> Unfortunately, what the fuck. <laughs> Uh, so that that is actually a, a great setup by me to tie us into the next question. <laughs> so humble, so humble. You know, it's, I, I spend so much of my life getting shit on. So give You're me right. this, you okay? Deserve like, this. give me this. This is this. this is my Super Bowl. <laughs> All right. So, would you rather give the first ninety percent of a blowjob or the last ten percent? Oh, easy day. Not first ninety percent. Yeah. The last ten percent is easily the gayest. So first ninety yeah. percent. I mean, it depends how long it is, but. The time in the penis, Wait, so, <laughs> um, but, penis um, wise or, yeah. um yeah first 90 percent. okay for sure what would you say oh my god that's all i can say <laughs> <laughs> i mean you were briefed on these questions <laughs> I, right and, and that's all i could think about you know from the time i saw that question <laughs> do i want to do this show? <laughs> right exactly exactly yeah. and uh you know so I, i'll just say this is uh you know my wife 
<laughs> put that question to me this morning after. Oh wow! After I, I told her, hey, this is going to be one of the questions on the uh, show, yeah. on the show, and so she said, well. <laughs> well, your wife needs to know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And for her, yeah. I said the last ten. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, what would you say? Uh, grizzly bear. <laughs> so, no, I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely with Mike. I think you gotta. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just don't want the grand prize. There I just, it is. Yeah, you exactly. know, I want to get. The, <laughs> I want to get the the manual labor out of the way, and then That's let somebody right. else step in for the there. prize. So, yeah. it's see, there. my thought process in this <laughs> is that it is literally one ninth of the amount of time having a dick in my mouth. Sure, I get that. So, if you say the first ninety percent, you're kind of volunteering for, you know. 900% more dick in your mouth. Um, I mean, math from Marines don't... I'm not sure how that works out. Yeah, that's not right. Yeah. Marine math, right. We're gonna go ahead. Nine yeah. times more. There we go. Right, there it is. But then again, Nine that is also... <laughs> that is also 100% more <clears throat> semen in your mouth than yeah, right. the first option. That is true. Right. Yeah, so um, I, I would probably say that I'd have to go with the first 90%. There you go. Okay. Yeah, because like the 10% is always like... Like, you have to like... Bear down. I was really waiting to do that. Oh, my right goodness. Right off the hip. I mean, that just came right to him. That just came to him. Like the last 10%. Like the last 10%. So, yeah. All right. So, bam. All right. Moving on to the, to the next question. Now, uh, we're actually going to be responsible adults. Oh, wow. Okay. What advice would you give to an 18-year-old going to boot camp? I actually get this question in my DMs all the time, so I have an answer. I... No matter what boot camp you're going to, no matter what branch, um, just do as you're told. That's it. No reason to try and stand out. I mean, I wouldn't say be the gray man because it's boot camp. You don't really need to be. But just do as you're told and learn as much as you can. That's it. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I, th I think what I would tell people is be in good physical shape before you mm -hmm. get there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's really what separates the great majority of our military from the rest of what's going on in the world is uh, that we're – in pretty fair physical condition and I, that's the advice i'd give is hey get in shape before you get to boot camp or basic training or whatever we're calling it today mm -hmm. and uh, and be ready and you'll have an advantage over others there next one so I, i'm gonna go a little bit more branch specific just mm -hmm. because um because uh, we have... know the Navy don't do fucking PT. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just ignore that and continue <laughs> talking. Okay, some of them. Um, so I had an opportunity to go to Navy boot camp about three years ago to tour the place. Yeah. Uh, two things that surprised the hell out of me. Uh, so one, that the, the uh, guy said that it's not uncommon to have a broken femur. On oh, candidates wow. coming through. Broken femur. Broken femur. So okay. in the age of I don't go outside and play and milk is the enemy, evidently broken femurs is... You know, kind of the, the, the thing they have every week now. So that kind of threw me. Here's the other part. If you're going in the Navy, learn how to fucking swim. <laughs> you would be amazed how many people are getting held back because they can't fucking swim. Like, what did you think? Like, it's the Navy. Well, in the Navy, if you're in the water, isn't it like mission failure? Kind of. <laughs> like, the goal's not to be in the water. Well, I guess yeah, it depends it, on your job. Yeah, that's, that's well, true. that's true. This from the guy who swims. <laughs> yeah, but it's Friday. Everybody's trying to hit Miller time. You're the one right, who can't like, get right, you know? Like, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. All right, so um, uh, do you have anything else, or is that about a cover? That was it. Yeah. That was good. So I, w I would say, um, and this does pertain to uh, Marines specifically because it is more of a cult-like you know, cult environment. Yeah, yeah. But just generally in the military, the military didn't join you. You joined the fucking military. Nobody asked you to be there. You signed up. You volunteered to be there. So this entitlement attitude that mm. a lot of uh, these boots have these days that, oh, like, oh, well, I don't want to work hard or I just want to skate out and I just want to sham or mm -hmm. whatever the case is. Like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. Nobody asked you to be here. Like, a better fucking Marine could be in my squad if you hadn't joined. Right. You know? And then to also remember that everything you do or fail to do is not only a reflection of you, but of the entire military. Mm -hmm. So if you fucking are, you know, flying down the highway and you're not paying attention and you get into a fucking accident, then the person's going to see your stupid high and tight come out and they're going to be like, fuck the Marines, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> or if you like bang someone's wife or if yeah. you fucking <laughs> pop on DUI or drugs or whatever the case is, it's yeah. not, you know, PFC asshole yeah. that did this. It was a U.S. Marine. Yeah. 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 So you have to remember that, like, 
And if you're at a fucking restaurant and they don't give you a military discount, don't flip out. Damn. You know, like, what the fuck? Yeah. So everything you do is, or you don't do, is a reflection of the entire military. So you have to be a good ambassador. You have to be a good steward of that fucking trust and responsibility and that legacy that everybody fucking handed down to you. Because, mm-hmm. like, here with us, like, if you have one fucking little little thread on your uniform, your senior Lance Corporal, your E3, is going to be like, Marines didn't die on Iwo Jima so yeah. you could disrespect this uniform. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing everywhere. Like, as a Marine, you are expected to conduct yourself that way 24-7. So the best advice that I could fucking offer is assimilate to the military. Yeah. If you don't like something, try your best to change it, but do it in the correct way. Pick up rank. Set the example. Don't be a fucking dickhead. That's the answer to that question. Yeah, well said. Well that's said. really well said. Yeah, I, yeah, I got to say, yeah, I got to. That, that deserves some applause from us. I got to say. That. that was well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, are there any particular questions that uh, our guests would like to pose to us? Hmm. That's a good question. Well, do you drink <laughs> you coffee? Tell me for I, know, I mean, come on. That's a good <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. which one of you makes better lasagna? <laughs> there you go. Um, um, I think we could probably ask the. Uh, we could probably ask a few people. A few people, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're uh, gonna have to fill this in. Yeah, I mean, well, we'll, yeah. Next, well, foreshadowing for, next, foreshadowing week. for next week. We'll do it next week. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, okay. Yeah. 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 So just so everybody knows, that was a little story to float around before we got this thing started, and apparently they're gonna make you wait until next week That's to hear so, it. All. Yep. Yeah, Keep watch the following yeah. episode. Right. To figure that Tune in. Yeah. So yeah. Lasagna lovers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knew? I mean, really? Who knew? That is surprising. It, I mean, it is a delightful dish. <laughs> so you can just door dash it. It's fine. <laughs> And I, I think that is the biggest difference between yeah. you and I. 100%. Yeah. Homemade lasagna, yeah. door <laughs> dash lasagna. Oof, that's so true. <laughs> that's so true. All right, so yeah, we do. Uh, we fucking, we uh, we do drink coffee. Uh, would you mm-hmm. recommend anyone? <laughs> uh, Anybody locally? Yeah, any just, local companies? Uh, yeah, so uh, obviously Bell Commander. Horse, we brought a brought a bag today. Mm-hmm. This is our newest uh, high caffeinated coffee. Boom, oh, right on. Yeah, Midnight Driver. Um, but yeah, we're uh, right now we're roasting out of uh, Missouri, but we're looking for a place local here. Uh, we think we might have somewhere locked down, so we're getting ready to set up locally. And EP Mike's roasting. butthole. That's right. That's correct. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a lot of room in there. Yeah, it gets roasted pretty often. <laughs> <laughs> Spit roasted. Pinch their coffin. I don't think they get the gist. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Oh, EP Mike got the gist, all right. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Well, that's ten percent of it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, we uh, we had a lot of positive feedback to his story last week. We did actually. I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah. You surprised? I'm surprised. <laughs> there's so many squirrel killers out there. <laughs> yeah. That enjoy yeah him hitting a squirrel to death. So. Yeah, and uh, and unfortunately, Peta did not. Uh, no. Levy charges. They're, they're scared of EP, <laughs> <laughs> as they should be. Yeah, so we uh, we got a lot of good feedback to that, but yeah, to to answer your question, yeah, we, uh, I mean, we drink coffee, and I think for me, the biggest reason that I don't drink more coffee is I'm too lazy to clean out the pot. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. And yeah, yeah, so, I, I gotta yeah, agree. That's that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So I just gotta <clears> stop being cheap and uh, and buy like uh, like a coffee machine that it's like easier to clean because right now I have a percolator. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to drink it though. I mean, yeah, yeah. it is hard to clean. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, because I, I kind of grew accustomed to it because um, I wanted coffee that wasn't shitty fucking um, like Folgers MRE coffee, mm-hmm. and so um, <clears throat> I had my family send me a percolator so we'd like start little fires on yeah, our patrol yeah. bases yeah. out in the fucking middle of nowhere so nobody cared. Mm-hmm. And we put a little percolator on it and now we have hot cups of coffee. Hell yeah. Yeah, so I, it's kind of the nostalgia, but I know I need to grow up and get like an actual fucking yeah. right, right. <laughs> coffee machine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, coffee man. Machine. I might have to hang on to that percolator. Yeah, just sure. just hearing that just brings back a few memories. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah, but like looking back at it, like the the instant coffee, and it wasn't so much like the flavor or whatever. It was just like the idea of having that like comfort, mm-hmm. right? Know? No, right. I'm gonna wake. I'm gonna I'm gonna drink this, and I'm gonna actually be able to stay awake for post or yeah. be more vigilant in the turret. And you said that that uh, that particular uh, uh, blend was high caffeine. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's for all you fucking uh, crack addicts out there. <laughs> this guy, this it's guy, about yeah. the size I of it too. Yeah. Yeah. Who uh, you know can't just fucking handle normal doses anymore. Nope. Destroyed <laughs> your bodies. These are drugs, so I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is healthier. 
Yeah, and you know, as a, as a good representative of the U.S. Navy, you don't <laughs> yeah, do drugs. That's, right, that's, that's right. correct. That's well, right. yeah, right, absolutely. Of <laughs> yeah. Is C four still illegal, or do they bring I, I, it back? The original, uh, the original C four is. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I actually don't think they make the same way they used to. But yeah, because the original, the original one had like jaguar shavings. It had like legit shit in it. it was, <laughs> yeah, it was fucking insane. I remember the first time I tried that, I was on deployment in 2011, I think, and I was on the 22nd Muse. I was on the ship, and uh, one of my Marines gave it to me. And he's like, he's like, RP, you're gonna fucking love this. And I was like, okay. And then I was just going to go for, like, a run on the treadmill because there's not much to do on the ship. And so I went on the treadmill, and then, like, 45 minutes later, I was like, I, 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 I'm going to go forever. Like, I can't stop, I can't stop running. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I've started yet. <laughs> He's the fastest man alive. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if we could get a military contract with this stuff. Sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be like, Chief, I want to do my PRT right yeah, now. Exactly. Yeah, I'll do the whole ship's PRT right yeah, now. I'll do everybody's. <laughs> just has somebody stand by with a pencil. Exactly. Yeah. So, I, think, I think this might be a hair yeah, less than right, that. Right, sure. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So what led you uh, to want to go into business, uh, especially like, you know, as a veteran? Uh, well, I would tell you, you know, obviously all of us have lived off coffee. You just reminisced mm -hmm. fondly about it. And, um, you know, as a sailor, I'm used to drinking the, the mud sludge in the bottom <laughs> of the yeah. giant container on the mess decks mm -hmm. at like two in the morning. Um, so it, it's really part of our culture in the military. Uh, and it was something that I just loved and I wanted to continue it outside and, and, and leaving the military. This is also our connection to still stay with it. The majority of our customer base, um, I mean, there's a lot of patriots that order, but a lot of them are veterans uh, and active duty. Um, so it was a way to stay connected, have fun and make something that we all love. And uh, we try to do it all with good shit. A lot of uh, high calf stuff has extracts and chemical shit put in it ours isn't we just played around with the beans until we figured it out and don't get excited when i say we played around with beans <laughs> um you until we got it right <laughs> he's still thinking less 10 percent <laughs> so um and what, what, what would you say drove you to want to go into uh into business uh you know in all honesty i, I never really had uh much interest in it until uh, a buddy of ours uh came to me and said hey i'm involved with this really cool coffee company and uh you know, a big part of it for us, or one of the main pillars of the company, is that we give back. Uh, we we give back to charitable causes. We have a line of coffee called Coffee for a Cause. Yeah. And uh, we donate fifty percent of all proceeds of every sale of that bag with that nonprofit's label to that nonprofit. So fantastic. Yeah, yeah we give them uh, fifty percent of it, and that's really one of the biggest things that drew me into the company. That it was going to give back to causes that matter to us. Those are primarily military causes. Uh, our most recent one is uh, called Pennies for Quarters. It's out in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, they're doing one of these tiny home uh, communities, villages, villages oh, for homeless okay. veterans. Yeah, and, like uh, quarters, like uh, like living quarters. quarters. Yeah. Right, living I quarters. thought you meant like pennies for quarters yeah, of yeah, marijuana. Yeah, no, good no, spot. Yeah. <laughs> How many yeah, pennies do I order? Good spot yeah. for that. But yeah, yeah this is. Uh, I was about to move to Washington. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, this is a charity for, that's uh, founded and run by a former soldier of mine from my days, my earliest days in the army. Yeah. Uh, and uh, an interesting little side note to that story is when I retired, I retired from Fort Lewis, Washington, and. He was living in Port Angeles as a Border Patrol uh, officer, and he came to my retirement ceremony 20-plus years later. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was kind of a neat story. And uh, when he you know, approached me a, a while back and said, hey, I'm going to do this uh, nonprofit, I immediately thought, yeah, we're, we're going to find a way to work this into uh, Coffee yeah. for a Cause. And so that's just one of our latest. We've got a couple – other brand new ones that just came out. One of them's local pennies for pause. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what, where, where can they find you then? What's your, what's your website, social media? So, uh, pillhorsecoffee.com, uh, is the website and then Instagram, pillhorse coffee, uh, Facebook. It's, I think it's pillhorse coffee co. Cool. Okay. Or you just go to the website and just click down at the bottom. It's not it's not rocket science. <laughs> yeah, just Google it, you animals. Yeah. <laughs> right. If Everybody you can't does figure Google. that out, you probably can't buy coffee anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Speaking of buying stuff, uh, time to plug our sponsors. Yeah, wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. Go ahead. Combat Comb Over, fantastic hair products, uh, pomade, beard oil, uh, just, uh, I think, horny goat weed. Has that launched yet? I don't think so, no. Uh, not yet, but yeah. stay tuned. <laughs> uh, you, stay tuned. Use our discount code, Cream Pie, to save money. <laughs> Then also check out Strike Force Energy, uh, liquid to go into your water bottles. Um, yeah, into your alcohol is where we most likely put it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, use our discount code Smoke Pit to save yourself some money. Also check out VictorAlphaClothing.com. They also donate a lot uh, to uh, veteran causes. So to bring it back into us, um, 
what would you what advice would you give to uh, veterans who are not looking to work in corporate America, but rather to you know join a company like like yours or to start their own? What what advice would you give them? Well, I will tell you, this is uh, my third year of doing this, so I've had a lot of time to kind of play around with this stuff. Um, use your GI Bill if you can. Go get your degree or whatever. But I will tell you, I, I'm not a college guy. I like I, I like going to college, but I'm just saying I don't feel you have to in America. You have to have go get them, and yeah. then you got to figure shit out. So, believe it or not, the majority of maybe that's where we're going wrong. But the majority <laughs> of um, what I figured out for social media, for marketing, for advertising is done via podcasts. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have listened to podcasts day and night on every drive. You know, taking notes, not while I'm driving, of course. Oh, of course um, not. Right. right yeah. I bring a stenographer with me. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just because I want it. Oh, I'm sorry. So, I don't mean to interrupt you. But for those of you who aren't 87, that's the person who types in a courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, then. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Fuck you and the soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. So, um Getting your degree, doing your homework, getting your, uh, you know, doing the research, seeing what other people are doing, what works, what doesn't. And network. Network. Networking yes. is the biggest one. Everywhere I go, whether I can work with them or not, I'm going to make sure they know who I am, what I do, and how I, I can help them. You know what a great networking opportunity is, Michael? What's that? Burbiz. <laughs> Fucking Burbiz. Coming yeah. up in Washington, D.C. Uh, Nova, or no, uh, fuck, I'm Wait, getting so August old. 14th. August 14th. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> no, August. It's a, yeah, new, no it's August. a new month. August 14th, Washington, D.C. Go to burbiz.com to register for free. There's an open bar for exactly. four hours doing giveaways. You can fight EP Mike. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's a great time. And we're doing one here in October uh, 9th. October 9th. That's right. Yeah, we're and we're looking for uh, local companies to come out and rep. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you guys know anybody, like yeah, yeah, you know, right, right, right. we'll have to yeah. think about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, not only um, putting up like a, a booth or whatever, but then also like uh, creating like um, a network that you can uh, mentor uh, young military members who are transitioning out and wanting to start a business. Uh, here in a few days, I'm going up to the Bravo conference with Scott Davidson mm -hmm. um, and uh, hosting. I'm going to be hosting a breakout session for social media, kind mm -hmm. of teaching people, you know, how to really target that demographic because it's all military entrepreneurs. And, uh, you know, targeting the post 9-11 military demographic is very fucking difficult. Yes, it is. Because for the most part, everybody thinks that they're all fucking Rambo. Everybody's got a big dick. And not saying that they don't have. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not, not saying that, you know, they don't have, you know, rights to, to be confident. But you have to bring your A game. Of course. It, you can't fucking. It's not like one of these like hipster artists that they post like an abstract picture of like a fucking. You know, acorn or something. Right. It's like a million fucking likes. Yeah. No, if you don't bring your A game every time, your followers will fucking let you know. Hundred percent. That was a good acorn picture, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, it was Mike's the dick. Dude with the egg. <laughs> like the dude with the, the egg. Did you ever see yeah, that yeah, one? Yeah. Serious, yeah. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, and and so in targeting that post nine eleven uh, demographic is obviously you know you want to sell your product to all veterans, but more specifically the post nine eleven ones are the more so who who are online on social media, more of those veterans you know because that was fuck. Uh, 18 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, so that's a very encompassing group and it doesn't mean that you had to start your career But you know a lot of people who started, you know, 5 10 20 years before that but ended after or around that time You know, they're they're in that category, too So targeting that group what would what advice would you offer to anybody who is trying to you know build their social media and um, target that group? <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, I, I'm not sure it relates exactly to the social media portion. It it does because social media is work. In all mm. honesty, when you're using it as your marketing tool, uh, social media is work. I spend a lot of time on Twitter, uh, which I'll tell you that I hate. Uh, Facebook, I don't do the Instagram quite as much, but uh, you know the reality is that's work. And and it kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier. Uh, you got to be willing to work for something. If you want a business to succeed or whatever it is you're doing, uh, you got to be willing to work for it. And that means shedding that entitlement attitude, I think, that you were talking about a little bit earlier. You're not entitled to anything because you served your country. You raised your hand and you volunteered. We all did. Uh, so you're not entitled to anything. You got to get out there and work and make it happen. The only thing you're entitled is to these monos. Exactly. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you just on, on that too be yourself and be genuine. Those are two things that people can see through bullshit yeah. very quickly. Yep. So no I saw tons of veteran-owned companies that have come up and gone away 
who tried to be an established company, you know, in the veteran community, they wanted to act like them. That doesn't work. You know, be yourself, be genuine. Um, and then care about people. Cause a lot of times I get, I don't, you guys get it too. I mean, we have 12,000 ish followers, I think, mm -hmm. but I still get every now and then I post something and it just says fantastic with fireworks. And I know that's some automated bullshit yeah, yeah. making a comment on my, and I'll just block them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So by genuine, I mean, every hour I'll grab my Instagram and I literally go through it and I'll look and I'll make a comment that means something, not just yeah. bullshit. Mm -hmm. So you got to be genuine. I think kids today and, and not even kids, I mean, people back, 34 years old they want genuine they want you to be yourself so that's true i mean i try to slide in their dms and clap some cheeks of course right you know, oh. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean if they're commenting on my on my profile well fantastic that's a method for yeah. sure yeah. Yeah. i'm sorry we don't all have you know like crazy fan base with uh, youtube pages dedicated to us well and, i right, do so right. i know what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> all one of them yeah. <laughs> very passionate fans very very <laughs> passionate <laughs> fans one, plural one passionate <laughs> fan <laughs> Yeah, and that's something I that that is true. You have to find your your voice and in, in your niche and uh, figure out how to be yourself. Because uh, when the military, you know, you, you get you all get together and you start bullshitting and cussing and fucking reminiscing stories, mm -hmm. and you you really kind of see that like uh, you know that that tribe mindset mm -hmm. start to come back. And so, like, how do you convince people who are not part of your current tribe? to join it mm -hmm, right. and how do you get them to support you and because there's so many different companies out there for so many different things and you know you have you know you only especially if you're you know active duty you only have so much fucking money yeah, yeah. and so i think you, know, you you're you're saying like having that personal interaction being able to comment something meaningful and interact with your fans that that builds a little bit more loyalty mm -hmm. yeah and so we appreciate all the fans who message us we try to message back as many as, as we, we possibly do. can we do. respond to comments we always appreciate it uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway here soon, mm -hmm. uh, just as a thank you to everyone. Uh, it'll be one of each of our three shirts that we have on the website. Uh, Military Great Alcoholic is the one I'm wearing. <laughs> we have the Smoke Pit uh, podcast t-shirt that Mike is wearing. I'm sorry. Um, and then we also have the Smoke Grenade tank tops that, uh, that we have there uh, as well. And so we're, we're going to be giving out one of three to our lucky winner with some stickers yep. and also uh, a used pair of Mike's underwear. That's that's pretty much what they want. That's yeah. What they want. <laughs> maker. love stains included yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so uh keep an eye out for that and uh, e uh send ep mike any questions mm -hmm. if you have it don't bother me yeah right. uh, no i'm kidding <laughs> don't bother <Dave. laughs> no i'm kidding um yeah and so that's just our you know our way of uh, of saying thank you to our fans mm -hmm. and you know we try to bring different companies and different people on the show and give them the opportunity to uh you know tell their story mm -hmm. because we've had you know we have like hundreds of thousands of Iraq and Afghan veterans EASing and ETSing every year. Yep. Yeah. And so there's so many untold stories. Yeah. And it just blows my mind that like 1% of ancient literature survived till now. <laughs> and so like think about how many untold stories there were from that career. And yeah. it didn't all have to be like, you know, fucking bayoneting someone sure. and all that stuff. But just like some crazy shit that happened on fucking ship, you know, like um, a capsule malfunction or there's a fire or a failure in a fucking system or what, you know, whatever the case is. EP Mike shitting in a foxhole. Like, yeah. <laughs> like there's, there's so many untold stories and we want to hear them. Yeah. Because absolutely. at the end of the day, if we don't keep you know, records of our own accounts, then who will? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely agreed. Absolutely. All right, Mike, you want to carry the rest of the show? <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> How much time is I think about 10, 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I do want to uh, pose a question. Now, having hung out with us for about 35 minutes or so, if you guys were going to make a smoke pit blend, how would you label it? Just from our personalities. I like to ask people this. Man. Yeah. So, uh, I... <laughs> I know, I'm looking I will say that. a lot. I do like that. I really okay. do. I yeah, think it, I think it's it, excellent. That goes a lot, but I, you don't want that. I, if I, I don't know, maybe just an asshole. On the back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could say it. We could call it a black hole blend, but everybody would know what it is, right? Because they've watched the podcast. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just really, it's all caffeine, <laughs> <laughs> and it's old, like burnt coffee. That's right. Yeah, it's used because it's, because you're going to percolate it anyways. That's actually, right. So. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> now, I can't I do, top that, so I'm not going to say. Like yeah, I, can. I do like this. I yeah, think that yeah, was yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for our listeners, he's uh, he's pointing to the flag. Mm -hmm. And oh, if yeah. you're not listening yeah, totally. or you're not watching our Instagram or YouTube channel, correct yourself. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and nice. yeah, okay. So, uh, what, what what would you say for flavor wise? We're talking hazelnut, <laughs> French vanilla <laughs> cream. Like the word nut in it. Yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> uh, I don't know. 
Maybe yeah, I'm not maybe, sure I'd go with a flavor. Fruity. Maybe yeah. something fruity. I don't know. What profile well, would you give us? <laughs> fruity may work. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, it might work. work. <laughs> yeah. Hey, just while we're on it, thanks yeah. for segueing me to it. Um, <laughs> so one thing that does make us a little different, I think, than other companies is uh, we do carry 19 different flavored coffees, Hell right? Yeah. So we have everything from Southern whiskey to birthday cake to nice. Mike's underwear. Yeah. So. <laughs> that could that be a new one. Soon. That one's coming yeah, soon. One's coming Mike's soon. underwear coming <laughs> soon. Yeah. Pell no, Horse I, coffee. No, I'm, I'm 100%. Like, I'll help fund it. Like, let's do this. <laughs> Did we just make a deal? <laughs> <laughs> we may have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah uh, so if you wake up in the morning, you brew yourself a pot of coffee, and you put it in your mouth, mm-hmm. and what 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 experience are you putting into your mouth to remind you of this podcast? Because uh. <laughs> I asked a question. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, well, we can't ask questions. Yeah, you, you deflected, so I'm coming back to yeah, it. Yeah, I don't even know where to go with that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, can that just be an audience question? I'd rather read it. Yeah, yeah I'd love to read the okay, replies no, to that. We'll send it out Anybody uh, who wants to reply to that question, let audience. us know. Send it in from the audience. Uh, uh, what yep. what kind of coffee you think these guys should have? What should it taste like? <laughs> and keeping in mind Mike's used underwear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. it'll be a key factor for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mike's boxer underwear. <laughs> right, boxers. Right, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is he's wearing. Yeah. I don't yeah. wear underwear, so this is a, a moot point. Which oh, shit. it uh, it could you know also kind of be like um, right. <laughs> like Mike's underwear slash Maggie's drawers. You know, did you guys have that that term? I I know that term. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's yeah. An old term. Yeah, it's an old <laughs> term, it's but it's a, term. it's a good one. That's yeah. for the iron sights. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Back in the iron sight days. And, yeah, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it was basically um, just uh, yeah a term that uh, that was used in, in the old range. Like, um, mm. and so I've I've heard it two ways. The way that I was most commonly uh, referred to it as is there was like a red stick that you waved. Uh, in certain occasions, depending on whatever the SOP was at the time, like you either completely missed the fucking target or you spin it if your target's in repair. Mm. And then I also heard people refer to it as the range flag. Oh, like okay. they hung, you know, uh, Molly's drawers and that's what you make your wind call off of. Oh, okay. So, uh, mm. but I primarily heard it as like the, the popsicle, you know, cause like they, they had like a stick and they'd put, you know, be like, you know, put somebody's underwear on it and like that would be the signaling tool. Okay. Yeah, okay. you know, they would wigwag just like uh, gotcha. Sergeant Major Quick did in Guantanamo Bay That's to receive right. the Medal of Honor. No big deal. Yeah, yeah no, no big deal. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, how did you hear that term used? In what context? Uh, for me, actually, I read about it uh, yeah. in a series of books called uh, The Core. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you've read those books or not. But I can't by, read. Uh, you can't read. <laughs> no. uh, I, I'm pretty sure he wrote them in crayon, so there's a possibility. <laughs> Audio uh, books, my friend. Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, for some of the, for some of you younger folks out there, there's a couple of series by a guy by the name of W. E. B. Griffin. They are uh, historical fiction. They're extremely accurate and incredibly well written. If you're a reader, uh, or if you can't read, uh, there's always audio. Yeah. Uh, but they're great stories, and uh, one of them was about the Marine Corps, one's about the Army. I think there's another one that might be about the, the Philadelphia Police Department or something to that effect. But he's one of my all-time favorite writers, and cool. uh, that's where I heard that term, Maggie's Drawers Out of the Corps yeah. by W.E.B. Griffin. Yeah. And how did he uh, How did he use it? Uh, he was uh, telling stories of Marines on the range, Yeah, you know, and uh, one of the stories was— uh, about one of the one of the primary characters had gotten his way into whatever they called OCS at the time. They were sending him. He was a, a corporal, and they were sending him to become an officer. And uh, he had previously had experience with the range officer, and yeah. had clashed with that particular officer, who it, in the story is, you know, pretty much a dirtbag. And uh, anyway, <laughs> on the range, he happens to be the range officer, you know. And so this kid is shooting, and he's a recognized expert. Uh, marksman from his enlisted days and meanwhile Maggie's drawers keeps waving every time he sends a round down range and uh, there's a another character in that series who's what they call a legendary sergeant major who kind of figured out what the heck was happening and, and got the officer sent on the direction he should be going and uh, yeah. got the kid qualified but they mentioned Maggie's so, drawers a number of times no yeah. impact no idea yeah, yeah. and then they, they weigh a popsicle oh, okay. yeah hmm. Yeah, so uh, locally here we have a range. We have several ranges, sure. and uh, the Marines aren't there anymore, but there was a range here that, um, that uh, sorry, uh, Gunny Hathcock, Carlos Hathcock, uh, oh, wow. he, yeah, he worked at as a civilian. Okay. Oh, wow. And so legendary Marine Corps sniper, he's, he's buried here. Um, occasionally the, the crew and I will go out and have a you know, drink at his grave, clean the headstone, stuff like that, to show our respect. And he was the guy who uh, shot the enemy sniper through the scope. Mm-hmm. Like, they based that uh, part in, I think it was Saving Private yeah, Ryan? Yeah. yeah, off of him in real life. Mm-hmm. And so he's, he's buried here. And after his career, 
uh, he worked at the the range on one of the bases here and <clears throat> so <laughs> uh, I was talking to this guy who was uh, the the OIC of the range and so he'd have like these fresh you know second lieutenant boots and they'd be qualifying 45s and you know so this lieutenant just can't get right you know he's like oh it's not me it's the gun the sights are off the action blah blah blah, blah. and so Carlos Hathcock you know legendary marksman worked there and he just, and so they had a game that they would play that whenever a lieutenant was complaining that it was the weapon, he'd be like, I bet I could teach any old civilian how to do this. <laughs> and then he'd be like, hey, you. And like, Carlos, he was a small, unassuming guy, you know? And he'd be like, what, me? Yeah. And he'd just kind of like putter over. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, here, you take this pistol, which you can't do now. Like, people no, freak the fuck yeah. out. Right. But he's like, all right, you know, square your shoulders, do this, yeah, do yeah. this, you know, snap the sights to your eyes, not your eyes, and, yeah. you know, whatever. And if you know how to shoot, then Google yeah. it. Or <laughs> pay Mike and he'll teach you yeah well I'm sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever whatever yeah if you're a young lady under the or over the age of 18 Jesus. <laughs> I'm kidding <laughs> kidding <laughs> yeah so he would bring Carlos Athcock over and be like watch I can show this civilian mm-hmm. and you know he gives him like two seconds of destruction and then just black 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 That's black so funny. Yeah. and he's just keyholing these fucking targets and the tents get all pissed off yeah. you know it's like see it's not the gun it's you that's fantastic. I never heard that story. It's fantastic. Yeah, I had yeah, either. That's a great awesome. one. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, granted, you know, he's a you know, expert marksman, but if mm. it, you know, it's oftentimes it's not the tool, it's the it's the operator, it's Very the true. user. Very true. You always. Know, you have to be ten percent smarter than the gear you're working that's with. Right. Is that's what right. AJ always tells me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything AJ says can be counted as gold. So yeah, yeah. that's yeah. fair. And so, um, go ahead. No, you said he was buried here locally. Where's it at? Uh, Norfolk, I believe. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Very okay. Cool. I did not know that. And also, um, Carl Bashir, yeah. the uh, the guy yeah. that Cuban Gooding Jr. played, and um, oh, the yeah, Navy diver, yeah, right. Men yeah. of Honor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's also buried here locally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's always cool when like when people go like go to grave science of Jesse Puller yeah, or yeah. you know mm-hmm. Audie Murphy, whatever the case may be, and you know just think like they were real men, like f- flesh and blood, mm-hmm. just like us. Mm-hmm. And smaller yep. penises, but For just sure. right. men like <laughs> us. 100%, 100%. Right. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> so, what was funny is uh, you talking about that, I could hear that kind of that respect in your voice. And uh, I think that it, it underlines what you said about going to boot camp earlier, right? To that you know you're joining that great organization it's not joining you maybe that's some good advice too is read some of these books learn about some of these great men who have you know fought and died for the country and uh what they've done yeah because i think that you know you got to have some pride in you anyways to go to to boot camp or you're in the wrong fucking business mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. but uh if that doesn't swell it a little bit more then you know and calm down when i say swell it but still <laughs> right i'm just Impossible. saying <laughs> i mean you know you're you're talking about a man that i know about but it still gives me the chills man it's like that's a badass american mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it sure is it. that's a great so, story too yeah. yeah so if you had uh any any books to recommend uh what would you say you, you already recommended yours huh? yeah um, absolutely go for it I mean. damn it was it one fish, two fish? <laughs> Red fish, blue fish? fish? No, yeah. a classic. A classic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say Garrett Jones, but he hasn't made his books available in the U.S. yet. I bought it. What? Yeah. He told me they were the new one. Yeah. What? Oh my God, Garrett, you fight <laughs> Shout me. Shout out, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so got, I actually got two. You want one? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, one. His books are available now. So yeah, uh, yeah. plugging Garrett. <laughs> yeah, check out. I mean, because he's an author friend of ours. Yeah, yeah, like you, animal. Fair, like, <laughs> oh, gee, if only I knew somebody who wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not a I'm not a reader. I mean, it's funny you That's you fair. made the joke earlier. I. I People are like, oh, you should get this book, and I'm like, why? Because I have enough shit in my house collecting dust. Right, yeah. right. Like I. If I get a book, it's literally just going to look nice for someone. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the lot, but I do audiobooks. I like to listen to audiobooks. Yeah. Um, I think I, the last one I listened to was, um, yeah, uh, Rob O'Neill's book. Um, you okay. Know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, and um, <laughs> the, the guy that shot a, a book. No Easy Day, is that what it was, or is that different? No, it's it's a different one. Yeah, yeah so uh, you can also check out uh, Red Platoon by our, our good yeah, friend, yeah. Uh, Medal of Honor recipient, Clinton Romshaw. Yeah. Great uh, book. Oh, cool. Great yeah. book and an incredible story. Yeah, mm-hmm. if, uh, if you're free, you know, feel free to come up to D.C. He'll be there for Burbas. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I heard about that earlier. I don't yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, also uh, feel free to check out um, uh, Echo and Ramadi. Yeah, yeah, I read that, that one too. Book. Yeah, it's a fantastic book. Yeah, I read so it. make sure to check that one out as well. And yeah, so do we have any closing thoughts before we uh, we end out the episode? Yeah, just uh, just a quick commercial break. We were talking about ranges and 
that sort of thing. So it brought to mind the fact that you can get our coffee locally at Freedom Shooting Center in Virginia Beach. They nice. carry it for us. Yeah, yeah. And if, uh, if you're a shooter, it's a great place to go and uh, get a little bit of trigger time. I'll say that, give them a little plug because I used to work there and there's a great group of people there. Nice. nice. Um, but yeah, they've got the coffee on the floor and you can walk in and get a bag. Yeah, and then also um, our other partner that's not here today, uh, our Coast Guard presence. Um, <laughs> he also owns Primo Cigars downtown Norfolk. And so you that's another location oh, okay. that you can get it right across from the scope. You can't miss it. It's the one with the giant trolley setting in the parking lot. Right outside, yeah. It's Ooh, a right inside, really cool needs. little place to go grab a, yeah. a really nice cigar. He sells great stuff down yeah. there along with the coffees on the floor in the shop down yeah. there. Beautiful. It's good stuff. Fantastic. Win-win. Uh, Mike, do you have any thoughts to close us out? Nope. Just uh, need more beer to get me through the day. <laughs> all right. So make sure you check out our website, popsmokemedia.com, to purchase all of our latest merchandise and send us pictures of you wearing it. Uh, we absolutely love seeing that. We try to repost. Uh, we love the pictures of people Challenge like yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. taking pictures. Extra small, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the people taking pictures of their, uh, you know, their uh, Sirius XM, mm-hmm. their, you know, their Alexa, their mm-hmm. iTunes, whatever the case is, wherever they listen to us. And, you know, putting whatever caption and feedback they had to the episode. We absolutely love that. Uh, we feel like you guys are just as much a part of this show as we are. A hundred percent. Yeah, because we uh, <laughs> we take crazy stories <laughs> from people that we either meet through the podcast mm-hmm. and social media. And, you know, we talk about it on here. That's what we do. Yeah, it's a smoke pit. And that's mm-hmm. that's who we are. And it's what we do. So I got one last thing, if I could, yeah. real quick. So uh, one thing I will do, uh, you guys are pretty awesome. So when you do your giveaway, we'll also throw in a bag of coffee for those winners. Hey. Beautiful. Hey. Um, hey. Nice. And then I'm going to get EP to take a picture of us afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will post it on Instagram after this episode airs. Yeah. And then uh, for anybody who reposts it, you'll enter a giveaway too. We'll send you a t-shirt, some coffee, and a cup. Good how shit. That? That's how you network right there, ladies Boom. and gentlemen. Yeah, that's what <laughs> Good we're talking shit. About. That was beautiful. And yeah, just a, a big thanks to you guys for having us on today. Yeah, it's been, it's awesome. been a lot of fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, I don't think I get to spend enough time around fellow veterans. So it's been a yeah, lot awesome. of fun hanging with you guys awesome. today. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah so um, we, uh, we appreciate having you here. Um, thank you to EP Mike for helping us set this up. And, uh, yeah, it, it's our pleasure to try to get um, veteran companies on here. And like co-host Mike always says, if we're not bonding together to support each other and lift each other up, then who will? I do say that a lot. Do you say that all the time? I said it like twice. <laughs> it's all right. Get it on your license plate. Yeah, yeah. If you can. <laughs> yeah he's actually going to get that tattooed on him. Nice. I will be at the tattoo convention next week, by the way. Oh, Are you yeah. going? Ah, uh, depends on the date. Fair enough. When is it? It's the uh, 9th to the 11th. No, I'll be at Bravo. That's right, that's right. Is that yeah. here? All, yeah, and the convention center. Okay. Oh, yeah. and if you get a picture of co-host Mike tattooed on you, we will repost it. <laughs> uh, is that Bye. like steve <laughs> now, Is he going to get one of himself is the question. <laughs> I might, I might. There's room. Mike, I'm feeling really suicidal today. Why is that, Dan? I don't know. I just feel like I don't have anything to look forward to. You know what? You can look forward to brand new merchandise. What?